Now let's go ahead and we're going to learn about CG points. CG points are structs, and structs allow us to couple multiple primitives together. So we can kind of have uh, two primitives that are related through their struct. Let's see how this is done. I'm going to go ahead and create a CG point. And a CG point is a primitive, so we don't use a care star here. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a name, so we can say my point. And we can set this equal to CG point. And we're going to use the function name CG point make. And it accepts two arguments, uh, a float x and a float y. So let's go ahead and we can actually enter whole numbers because we want to use whole numbers for our CG point. And we can do 3-3. Three, three. Now we can go ahead and log out the different points. And we can do my point dot x comma my point dot y. And actually, let me go ahead and make this 3, 4 so it's very obvious what's printing out to the console for us. And we go ahead and run our application. And we'll see here 3 prints out and then 4 prints out for us. So CG points are a fairly simple way for us to couple information together. CG points can also be properties. So I can go ahead into my header file and we can write at property non-atomic because it's a primitive, it's not an object, so we don't have to give it strong. And we'll say CG point, and again, we're not going to use a care star here, so I can say something like current point. And if I go back into my implementation file, I could change my point to self.current point, and then I could print this out as well. So self.current point dot x and self.current point dot y. And what is the advantage to using a property? Well, I could also access self.currentPoint.x inside of my did receive memory warning. We're not going to do that because this method doesn't get called, which we've proved before. Let's go ahead and run our application, and we'll be able to see that the same numbers are printing out. So it's also possible to use CG points as a property.